what's going on people quick announcement videos will be every Monday and Thursday there may be one or there may be a shitload but they'll be every Monday and Thursday so that's what's going on a lot of cool stuff a lot of fun stuff's coming up today I want to discuss getting rich 1% at a time one of the most disheartening emails that I ever get is, Hey, Glendon, been watching your channel a long time. Just got laid off. What can I do to earn $3,000, $4,000, $5,000, $6,000, or $10,000 within the next 90 days to support my family? I see the email, and I, my heart goes out to the person for two reasons. One, they lost their job, they're in the world of hurt. And number two, they're delusional as fuck. One of the things about being successful and having the life you want is it starts with the decision that you made five years ago. And this is something that people continue to try to escape. They continue to try to get around. Typically, if your life is really good today, it's because of the decisions you made yesterday or last week or the year before because I want you to think about this your life doesn't get incrementally better or incrementally worse on the issues of one day unless you're in a wreck or something which is atypical most of us do not get in automobile wrecks most of us don't die you know because of sudden orange scurvy disease that's going to eat your inner soul out that, that just doesn't happen for the most part you get up you go to bed and each day is pretty unremarkable compared and contrast against the next day or the previous day so essentially one bad day doesn't fuck up your life one good day doesn't make your overall life better to be really successful if you do whatever you do one freaking percent better each day or each week or each month and you don't backslide terribly your life will get better if you incrementally do fucked up shit on a daily basis or a weekly basis or a monthly basis your life will be incrementally fucked up and excuse me the problem for many people to grasp this and hold it and not lose their little minds is time you do not become successful immediately it's going to take time this is one of the reasons and i should say this i no longer recommend amazon much less uh, you know it's for kindle amazon or ebay to any of my clients i i just don't recommend it if it's like part of a larger plan yes but just I don't. I don't. There's just too many bad things going on. I'm just seeing a lot of flux. And reason that there's a lot of flux is it's becoming harder and harder for people to gain employment that provides a living wage. You can go out and get a job or two at six, seven, eight, nine. I have a friend who's a recruiter. He tells me. I'm looking at the resumes, and these like people who are our age, dude, who are making eight, nine, ten dollars an hour, and have been for a long time. This is the reality, and many of these people have degrees because, you know, that's a whole other video, but I'm not gonna get into it. But essentially, all of these people are now running to Amazon, and they're running to eBay, and they're running to Etsy, and it's just like. I gotta pay the bills. I gotta put some milk in Baby Joe's bottle. I gotta do all of this stuff. And the thing is, what they're missing is you had to have started on this. Because this is what I tell you, I'll tell anyone. If you have a job and things are just ducky right now, you still need a fucking side business. Because I'm here to tell you, unless you're just remarkably fortunate or you are in a career a career that's just bulletproof if that means anything today that at some point what you do where you are will be disrupted and if you have a side business and I am proud to say I have many people 
who sent me this email and I love to see this email. Yo, gee, I got laid off today. And you know what? It's a good fucking thing because now I have more time to work on my fucking business. I love getting those emails. I fucking love getting those emails because two, these people are not panicking Penelope. Like, oh, the sky is falling. And they're wetting all over the floor because they don't know what the fuck they're going to do because they have a plan. One guy, Morris, uh, got laid off and it took him three years, but he got his resale business up to six figures. Okay. He wasn't making six figures on the fucking job. I love that story too. Uh, another dude, he got laid off. He had been hustling for six months. His wife was in his ass was in his fucking ass. And it's like, why are you listening to that guy on YouTube? Well, he got laid off and he kept hustling. And he kept hustling, he kept hustling. And you know, he and the wife were going at it because he was sending me these emails. It's like, how do you handle someone who doesn't support your business? I was like, man, you're married, do what you need to do to preserve your marriage. So he worked it out, he hustled on the weekends. Well, long story short, because he was hustling uh, when he got laid off, he started making more fucking money hustling, and now his wife is sucking his dick every morning before he goes out and hustle. He told me that. I did not ask. He shared that with me because he says she treats him totally different. And I'm going to actually go somewhere with that because I know more about that situation. Uh, pretty much, dudes, I don't care about what any feminist tells you, but if you're a man and you're not earning money, and you're not in control of your domain, you're going to have problems with your woman. Hate me for telling you the truth. And since this dude actually ignored her, because remember, she was in his ass, and he said, you know what? I'm doing this. I go to work. I support this family. What he did is his balls fucking descended, and she's like, ooh, I'm married to a man now. And they're fucking more than ever. I'm I'm telling you, what happens to a lot of guys in marriages, they become feminized and domesticated like some fucking kind of dog, and they stop getting pussy because the woman doesn't respect him. She may love him, but she doesn't respect him. And women, go ahead, chime up in the comments. How many of you can fuck a man you don't respect? And they're going to be like, fuck no, can't do it. You can fuck a dude you hate if you respect him, but you cannot fuck a dude that you love if you don't respect him. It's amazing how that works out. Well, part of getting rich with the 1% as these uh, very colorful illustrations I just painted for you will tell you is at some point you need to be working on your enterprise before chaos and calamity occurs. 2009, and, and I'm telling you this because I've been in your position. I've had so many people in my ass like, you never wrote a book before. What makes you think you're going to be a writer? You've never owned a publishing company before. How the fuck do you think you're going to do that? Uh, it's, it's just what they're doing is projecting their mediocrity and fears upon me. It's like, I can't do that. And I think I'm better than you. So what? who the fuck are you to be trying to show up my perceptions of you? And I had this stuff, and that people, I mean, seriously, pulled me aside, like, you know, pulling me on my shirt, and like, yeah, can I talk to you? Uh, you know, I, I really think this course of action that you're on is just not really good for you. You know, you need to go, like, uh, work at the post office, or, you know, start a storage auction business. You need to do what you're fucking suited to do, which to me was the ultimate insult, because they were saying, you know, I don't think you have the stuff to do what you want to do. Well, here it is. And we are actually 32 days from that day, the, the, my day of uh, emancipation, that July, July 17th, no, July 15th. Oh, wait a minute, yeah, yeah, shit, we're, we're 31 days. July 15th, 3.30 p.m., when I said I wanted to be a writer, made the decision, and wrote down that first line and developed a plan on that first book. That's what happened. And here it is, my fifth fucking year. And uh, yeah, I'm being arrogant and I'm, I'm talking smaggity smack because you can hate me. Because I've got guys who, here on YouTube, they fucking hate my ass, right? They, But they respect me. And you know how I know they respect me? Because they copy my shit. 
from, you know, starting to do black and white, you know, YouTube videos and thumbnails and stuff, they copy my shit. They may hate me, but they don't like, and they don't like me, they clearly, but they respect me because you can't copy the shit of someone you don't respect. You can't do that. You will not. People don't steal shit they don't respect or think has value. Funny how that works out. So here I am at this point, and I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that in the beginning, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be rough, rugged, and raw. It's going to be rocky. And you're going to have all of these people who are going to come out. I don't think you should do that. I don't, you know, you're working on that. You should do this. You should do that. You should do this. You should do that. Because I have a very low opinion of you, and I feel that you should adopt my opinion of you. Don't be off there trying to, you know, become like special and shit. So, what I'm telling you is, when you, you want to get on this road of becoming wealthy 1% of the time, you have to learn how to deal with the bullshit of others. Because typically, when someone insults you, unless you've just done something really heinous to them, they are really insulted by the promise that you present. Because... I, I mean, I'll just tell you, I am the white sheep of the family. Bah, bah. And I wasn't really supposed to come out like this. I was supposed to probably be in jail, um, have like, you know, 18 baby mamas, um, and really not hidden on much anything in this thing called life. And actually, you know, some people in the family have regressed who thought they were better than me. Ha ha. As the white sheep goes, bah, bah. But what's going to happen is you are going to need to develop some incredible mental tools to deal with this you you will have to become stronger because the the big thing is not so much dealing with the backlash or family and that nonsense the big deal is you will have to develop the mental strength to continue to go on your journey when it doesn't seem like the end is in sight that is going to be the big big thing of having some kind of strength mentally that will allow you to stay the course and continue to move forward with your enterprise because what's going to happen is we've been conditioned to fear failure we've been conditioned that if we don't look smart we're not really smart and this creates a serious problem in terms of sustained effort when you're not seeing a lot of benefits or goodies, you know, it's just like, I've seen this so many times, it's like, hey, I've been doing eBay for three months, it's not working out. Hey, I've been doing Amazon for three months, it's not working out. Hey, I've been doing this for a few months. And the thing is, the reason it's not working out is because you don't have the skill sets that you need to be successful yet. The stuff is not there yet as you move forward and build yourself and become wealthy 1% of the time and I, I'll really break that down as you marginally improve and don't backslide you know give you a classic example I'm in the gym lifting weights that I didn't lift in high school or college I mean I am setting lifelong personal records because I'm following an incremental success, I mean system, that recognizes that you are not going to make huge gains overnight. It's a, a system of, I get better incrementally every week. Every week, I get a little bit better. And there are other weeks where I don't even try to get better in terms of lifting weights. Because if you don't know, strength is a function of your nervous system strength is a function of 
highly efficient nervous system. That's why someone who weighs maybe 150 pounds can bench 400 pounds, deadlift two, you know, five, because their nervous system and they, they do have muscle, but they've made themselves neurologically more efficient than a person who isn't training. So part of the training is not really to lift weight, but to make the nervous system more efficient to build that groove. Well, when you do that and you don't backslide and you just get a little better every week, as that clock turns and Monday turns to next Sunday, then 2009 turns to 2014, all of a sudden, if you don't stop, if you continue to get better a little bit each day or each week or each month, you will have this, you'll look back and you'll see all of this accomplishment and improvement. But many people are looking for substantive change like that. There's like, bam, I did some, like the guy on the treadmill in the commercial. He, 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 he runs on the treadmill, he gets on the scale, then he runs on the treadmill for 30 seconds or runs around the gym, comes back and gets on the scale and it's like, where are my results? There was, that's what many of you are doing and it's totally killing your future success because you want it now like those jg wentworth commercials this is my money i want it now it's my success i want it now and you're not giving yourself a chance to truly be successful because you don't know how to be thankful for marginal success say you did 98.6 percent on monday then next monday you did 98.9 percent you know, which is point, point something percentage point. Many people are like, that's just not enough. Glendon, that's just not enough. I mean, if it's not a full fucking percentage point, what's the fuck use in doing it? And that's where you go wrong. Because if you go from that 98.6 to that 98.9, then you go from that 98.9 to 100%, then you reset and you start over and over again. Once you get to a certain you know, point in the road and you look back, you'll see that you were doing 100 pounds, but because you kept getting incrementally better, now you're doing 250. I went from, in the last 18 months, and there was a period where I took some time off because of family stuff, but I went from, you know, deadlifting like two something to, I'm at 600, I'm in a 600 range. I'm 47 years old, I'm getting stronger, I'm getting bigger. And it's an incremental process. And another thing that happens with, you know, getting successful, getting wealthy 1% of the time is you don't damage yourself. I, you know, I got damaged. I had a, a pinched nerve, but it wasn't because of something I did in the gym. Actually, I slept funny one night and got that kink. But I haven't had the injury problem that used to happen early on. Like I get in the gym, just kill it, just kill it, just kill it. Next thing you know, some snapped up. It's uh, the the twin, Hodge twin, snapped some shit up. I'm not going because I'm, I have a plan, and I have structure, and there's a focus, and there's a goal. So I'm comfortable with because, you know, here it is, June. If I get to, I, I know I'm going to get past 612 pounds before De December. I already know that, but if I got to like 620, 630 from now to December, which is only a 30 pound increase because I'm in the growth range, I'm gonna be thrilled. Because, you know, next year, say, you know, it takes me all the way next December to get to 640. I'll be thrilled because essentially I am moving forward. And I've studied this thing and I've looked at guys who lifted weights and worked out and had a level of fitness their whole life. They're not the average 60 year old or the average 70 year old or the average 80 year old. It's a cat I saw, 80 fucking years old, deadlifting 400 pounds. Guess what? Dude ain't walking with a cane. Matter of fact, dude may be still fucking. I want to be that dude. I want to be that dude. And it's pretty much, if I look at the bigger picture versus the myopic picture of, I got to be successful right now because I got to get these bills paid. I got. If I keep looking at that, yeah, I'm going to be like you. But if I start looking at, okay... Uh, it took me three months to write my first book and then I've got this process and let's just, you know, fast forward to five years from now, which would be my 10th year as a writer. If I become 1% better incrementally, whether that's per day, which is amazing. If I do it every week, which is still awesome. 
five years from now, my shit will be so tight. It would be so tight, the things that I would be able to do. And understand, there's a vector coming on because, you know, I talk about this big thing and people are, you know, for writers, it's essentially, I'll just, this is the big thing. There's already an app, but it's going to be a better app where whatever's, whatever, you're going to go to Kindle, download your book, right? And you can, if you could be an, an Italian, you could be French, and there's going to be this app that's going to translate everything perfectly. So that's going to open up the world to all types of new possibilities. And if you're a writer, content creator, whatever, this it's going to benefit you in ways that's just going to be staggering because you can write a book and then say, you know, I want you to think about this. You write a book, right? And a billion people buy your book and you get a dollar from that book. I'm just sitting here so you can let that, just to let you, that's coming. Just to let that sink in. Someone, hopefully it'll be me, is going to write a book or a series of books and it's going to go around the world and they're going to have more control than any other writer or creator than ever before and they're going to get a good chunk of that income and that book's going to go around the world and they're going to sell that book to a billion people and they're going to make a dollar say they do it through kindle and they make uh you know sell the book for 2.99 and they make like a dollar 99 and they do that in a year that's a billion dollars in income earned in a year i mean I, I want you to understand how significant that is and that's coming that's coming because everyone's like, oh, Glendon, 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 you know, when you keep saying you're going to make more money in the writer than in the storage auction business, I looked into the future. The storage auction business taught me patience. It taught me tenacity. It taught me cycles. It taught me how to sell inexpensive shit. It taught me how to sell moderate shit. And it taught me how to sell really, really expensive shit. So when I take that experience and I put it to the writing model and I just look at it and also something I got from Curtis Mayfield about owning my shit, going back to the 10 year mark of my writing career, I may have a hundred books. And once again, let's just do math. So none of the books were spectacular, right? But they're all selling like, you know, 10, 20 copies a month. I got a hundred. It's 2000. Now this is just, this is bargain basement expectations. Okay. So that's two to 3000 copies sold per month, right? At $3 profit per book. It's nine G's. Nine G's. But also, when you have that many books, you enter into very rarefied air. Typically, people with that many books, 35, 40, 50 books, have seven figure incomes. It's not that many. It's only a handful. Because so many people don't read enough and live enough to create enough experiences to have the type of the ingredients for their imagination to put that much stuff out. I could write a hundred books just off the storage auction experience alone. Just there's so much shit that I haven't told y'all. And you know, once again, because of the TV shows biting my shit, I was like, you know what, fuck y'all, y'all want this, y'all can have it. You're not gonna be using my shit because I'm not putting it out. You can't get what you can't see. And then later on, I'll put out that stuff in the book. But I got a hundred books just on that. Just on that. Uh, there's probably 25, 30 books just from my experience of starting YouTube, writing the shit that I went through in these last five years. There's a book. I mean, so what I'm telling you is you have to do stuff so you will have stuff to give to other people. As long as you're sitting there like, what should I do? You can't become 1% successful on a wish and a whim. You can't become successful hoping and wishing. You, it's not going to happen. So you, you, you have to do something so you have something to present. You know, and someone that put in a comment that when I said, you know, me writing, creating books and stuff, this is it. It says very powerful. I've been trying to get here for like 15 years. You know, it, it's just I wanted to do it when I was married. She wasn't with that shit. I wanted to do it another time. Uh, it didn't work out. And I didn't stop, which goes back to the 1% improvement. Many of you give up on your dreams because they can't happen right now. So there's this thing, it's like, well, you know, if it's going to happen right now, what's the fucking point? Like those people who's like, I can't go to the mall with no money in my pocket because if I see some shit I want to buy and I can't buy it, I'm going to get depressed and come home and shoot, you know, Pookie the cat. That's mentally weak. I can understand if you don't want to go to the mall because you have shit to do. 
It makes plenty of sense. But it's like this whole thing of, I'm not going to the mall because I can't uh, buy nothing because, you know, it makes me feel insignificant and uh, it makes me feel bad about myself because, you know, I'm a buster and a loser. You have a very weak mentality. And this is where having a strong mentality makes this 1% thing doable because if you have a weak mentality, you're not going to be able to do the 1% thing. It's just not going to happen because you're going to give up so quickly because you're looking for immediate gratification you're looking for someone to bake the cookies for you put them in your mouth and wipe your chin and you know as the crumbs come down because you have no vision for your future you have no plan for your future you're just kind of doing shit and hoping it works out so if you want to become wealthy one percent at a time you have to get started with something will that work out no, it may not work out. But what you get from doing that something is an experience that you can apply in to something else. Because, you know, people laugh at me. It's like I had five businesses that failed. I was in the military. I was always trying to do stuff and it didn't work out. And I would try this and it didn't work out. But through those five failures, I gained knowledge that I would not have gained if I didn't go through the experience of failing. And this is the thing that many of you is like, I'm not trying to lose any money. I'm not trying to lose any time. I'm not trying to fail. I just want to go straight to success. You ain't that good. Very few people are that good. Bill Gates wasn't that good. Steve Jobs wasn't that good. The guy that started PayPal wasn't that good. Test, a lot of these guys weren't that good. <laughs> if Do you get where I'm going? They weren't that good, but look where they ended up when they became that good. When they went through those reiterations of their products, when they when they refused to stop, when they just kept going, and I'm gonna keep hitting this wall till it comes down. Once again, you get the one percent of being successful when you really, really own that, and when you learn how to emotionally manage your expectations, where you can go like, okay. Uh, this week is Monday. I started at 1%. Friday, I'm at 1.5%, which is huge. And you you maintain those gains consistently. You can become wealthy, thinner, happier, all kinds of stuff. This stuff works with everything from dating. You can become 1% better with dating. Do you know that most people do not have the balls to go up to a stranger and say, look, you know, I think you're really cute and uh, I'd like to take you out. And that goes, you know, both ways, whether it's a man or a woman. Most people don't have that kind of courage because of they may fail or they may look uh, stupid or, you know, these all these bad outcomes that they have in their head that they will not do these type of things. When if you can do that, you don't have you don't need Match.com or you don't need um, uh, whatever uh, plenty of fish. Uh, what is the new thing? Uh, Tinder, one of my friends was telling me about Tinder, that shit's crazy. You don't need that shit. You can just like walk up to someone you see and find a practice. And the, you know, chances are you're gonna get shot down. But then you see someone else and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again. Then one day you're gonna ask this girl that you in your head thought was out of your league and she's gonna smile and she's gonna go out with you and she's gonna fuck you and you're gonna be laying in bed like, I'm so glad that I stepped to this one. Because that's the genesis and you know i make it really crash for a reason because most guys this shit kills them it kills them in more ways than you can know and but the thing is if you cannot represent yourself and go over and talk to a woman or as a woman because it's 2014 go talk to a dude how the hell are you going to start a business and go talk to customers it's you saying hey will you go out with me and share a cup of coffee or something how are you going to go and ask this client for a million dollars? I don't see how you can do one and not do the, you, if you can't do one, you generally you're not going to be able to do the other. It's that simple. So by becoming 1% better with dating, you'll become better as a salesperson. There's carryover effect. You can do this one thing and then it's going to increase other areas of your life. But many people are sitting back like, hey, what is the right thing to do until the right thing, until I know what the right thing is to do, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to sit here and be willy lump lump. 
or a Willalina lump lump, just kind of waiting, and then your lips are going to get stuck out, and you're going to be mad when you see someone out there doing it and doing their thing, and they're, they're making it happen, and all of a sudden, you're like, well, that was my ideal. I could have did that. Fucking lucky mother. They ain't lucky. They're active. Become active, and you'll become lucky. I mean... I bristle when people come at me. It's like, oh, you're lucky. Oh, you know, uh, these things happen. Oh, it's so easy for you. They weren't there in 2009 when I, a real good friend of mine that I don't talk to anymore told me, you suck as a writer and you should give this shit up. That's what I had to deal with. And you have your own shit to deal with. I'm not going to tell you the bullshit's going to disappear. I'm telling you that you need to learn how to become a dragon slayer, get your spiritual sword, and fucking cut through that shit and keep fucking going. That's what I'm telling you. I'm not telling you the dragons are going to disappear or your fucked up parents are going to disappear. What I'm saying is you're going to have to man up, put on your big boy panties, your big boy pants, put on your girl big boy panties, and just step out there boldly and live your life on your terms. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm saying it's going to be worth it because essentially... What happens to people is they start off with all of these wonderful expectations and then they get beat down by life. And then one day that person who used to be six foot one, they're, they're two inches tall. They still look six foot, six foot one in their shadow. But when you look at them head on, you're looking down because life has beat them down. And then, you know, there's an expression that I find to be very a pro for this is hurt people hurt. So you've got these people who are living these lives of quiet desperation off the middle of death of a salesman. And they're looking at you with dissension, hate, and just outright aggression. Because how fucking dare you go on and live your life of intent and design when I can't do that shit and I'm supposedly better than you. You know, it's kind of like white privilege. There are white people who are fucking freaking out because there's black folks and Asian folks. Oh, white privilege extends even to other white people because if you go back to when the immigrants were coming from Ellis Island, the Italians were discriminated against, the Irish were discriminated against. If you weren't WASP, white Anglo-Saxon and Protestant, you weren't shit. So a lot of people don't know that and that's why when I listen to all of this rhetoric about race and stuff, if people really knew how discriminatory that so many groups of people went through. That's why you go to Boston. That's why all the Irish guys or stuff are cops or firemen because that's the only shit they were allowed to do. And now it's a source of pride. But if they go back, it was like, well, the reason your grandpa, you know, leaned in Popo was a fireman was because, you know, the white England Protestant said, fuck you. And that's all we're going to let you do. We're going to let you run into our burning houses and save kids and shit because you, we ain't letting you do anything else. And when you really look at that, that someone who of Irish descent or German, all these folks were discriminated. There was a huge backlash when people were coming through Ellis Island. It's like, and you know, folks were like, send those motherfuckers back. We don't want them here. And they were white. <laughs> yes, there were white people who were suffering from the pillages of white privilege. So when you understand that, it's really about class and it's about access and wealth. That's what it all boils down to. Even going from the slave trade, that's what it all boils down to. But you have these people who are losing their minds because they've built what I call a positional self-esteem. You are good because you're better than this person. And someone told them that. And as this thing comes more global and, and people are just like, oh shit, that's not true. There are some people, like an old Dave Chappelle clip where... Uh, the guy who was the white supremacist, but he was black, and when he took off his robe, the guy's head blew up. Uh, there's a lot of white people; their heads are blowing up. It's like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, what do you mean? Wait, 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 wait. You mean to tell me, for the last 65 years, I thought I was better than niggers, and you mean that my daughters and their grandkids are fucking niggers because they're better than what they can get? There. Uh, uh, There's a lot of mental implosion that is fucking going on because this is the truth. Anyone can become better than they are. And when you incrementally improve and you get wealthy 1% of the time, you're going to separate and divide yourself from the masses. You will go from a period of being hated to a period where people will look at you with adulation. Because you've escaped the bullshit. 
uh, I've got a video on this channel like uh, yes I'm with the black guy and it's actually about that shit because this uh, racist white woman thought that her niece dating a black guy was better than her niece being a lesbian there's all kinds of discrimination that's going on but the thing is if you go back 50 years ago she would have never even thought that shit She'd been like, well, you know, this is the lesser of two E's. It's fucked up either way you think about it. It's totally fucked up. But the fact that this is happening means something. I, I fight with some of my friends about this all the time. In history, we move forward as a people. And when I say a people, humans. We move forward. Things change. And there's a lot of people who's like, you know, more things change. More than... No, no, things change massively. Massively. And to really just know what you're dealing with there's a there's this potential for you to start today and to become this person of worth in five years or ten years from now if you get started and you become one percent wealthy one percent better as often as you can and you don't stop Going back to lifting weights, I've got these things uh, that are called fractional weights. It's a one pound, it's three-fourths of a pound, it's half a pound, and it's one-fourth of a pound. You're doing 600, right? You may not be able to do 610, but you can do 600 and half a pound. And you slap that shit on. Then next week you can do six and three-fourths, and you can do 601. And over a period of a year, because I got the fractional weights for when I stalled, over a period of a year, if you continue to do that, all right, people are doing crazy shit out here. Uh, for for a period of a year, if you continue to do that, every week you're moving up a pound. How many weeks are in a year? That's 52. That's 52 pounds. If you can maintain that for three or four years, that's 150, you know, three years, that's 50 pounds a year. That's 100 pounds in two years. That's 200 pounds in four years. You will be incredibly strong and you won't injure yourself. But it's having the mental strength to continue to push forward and get wealthy, better, happier 1% at a time. That's what, because it's going to be the time thing. And that's why I tell everyone, get started. Because another thing that just pisses me the fuck off is... People are waiting for someone to give them fucking permission to get started. It's like, well, you know, I need... No, you just need to get started, motherfucker. You just need to get started. Um, I didn't wait for anyone to tell me, you know... I, actually, I've had one, two, three, four, five... I had six people tell me, you know, writing was my thing. I, I've had people tell me telling stories wasn't my thing. I had people like, hey, you know, putting groups... Nah, that ain't your thing. I've had many people tell me that I couldn't do the shit that's currently putting money in my pocket. I want you to think about that. You can't do that. And this is something else. And this is where I'm just going to rub some stuff in people's nose. I have a lot of writer friends who are better in terms of lacing those words. Because it's an art and it's a craft of being a writer. Which means I got a lot of, I got a long way to go. I realize that. You know, it's like every day I got to get better. 1% getting wealthy, remember? And there are many of these people who are these great writers, right? But they can't support this. They cannot support themselves off their craft. But I, the one who doesn't have the talent level that they do, can't. Proof is in the pudding. There's what you say you can do, and there's what you're doing. <laughs> I love doing that. Because I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Because uh, this is a great journey. But if you want to become wealthy, happy, better, whatever, 1% of the time, and just chart it out that I'm going to continue to do with these things that are going to make me better a little bit at a time for a long period of time. This is how I did it when I was a bum. I was making bad decisions and I landed myself in a bad situation due to making some bad decisions. When I got to the point of taking ownership, and I actually had this conversation with myself. It's like, you got to stop fucking up. I had this conversation with myself. I wasn't in front of the mirror and it's like, you got to start making better decisions. So it was about an 18 month period where I started making better decisions on a consistent basis and things just kind of really turned around. They really turned around because like I said, your life didn't go to shit just yesterday. Your life went to shit over some decisions that you made months, weeks, or years ago. 
Your life didn't get magnificent just yesterday. Your life became magnificent over decisions and stuff that you made weeks, months, years ago. I stayed this course of being a writer when everyone's like, don't do it. No, Glennon, no, you can't do it. No, you, you should do something safer because that's too risky for you. You know, you're, you're older, you're long in the tooth. Uh, no, 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 no. And this is why when I tell you these things, and I drop these principles and I sell you these courses and I teach you these things. This is the shit I use to be successful. This is the shit that I can in the middle of the gym and in the middle of the day working out when you're at work. Uh, this is the shit you do like when I'm like on vacation doing videos and shit for an hour, then goofing off the rest of the day, getting, you know, slickered, not drunk, but slithered while you're at work. These are the principles that set me free and keep me free because many of you are going to be forced into this lifestyle because technology is going to displace you and your job so the sooner that you embrace this stuff and get on board the better off you're going to be this isn't me being mean this is just dropping some truths because i look back at my period of fucked up in this fucked up this and i'm very grateful because i went through it at a time that i can recover you 50 years old you can still recover. You 60? Wouldn't be that you can't recover, but mentally, I've noticed this with a lot of older people who don't continue to embrace new things. They get stuck. It's like, they just can't move forward. They can't embrace new concepts. They're just, pff, head blows up when a new concept is introduced to the gray matter. It's like, I can't deal with this. It's just, they. it's like their mind is set in concrete. And I'm telling you, don't let your mind set like that. Keep it flexible and malleable and embrace new concepts and new ideas. Don't let it come into the concrete where, you know, it's just going to blow up on your ass. Because we are in one of the greatest informational, cultural, international, global shifts in, in the history of man. And you can be either rail kill, ran over by it, or you could be riding that shit, riding that shit. You know, putting your shoulders, riding that shit, like, yeah, psh, yeah, riding that shit into your future. Because it's happening. You know, all these people who call up on race, whatever that means, you're just stupid. Because in the future, shit's not going to matter. It's going to matter your class. Classism is never going away. It's never going away. Racism, you know, many people confuse classism with sometimes racism because I noticed that rich black people, rich Asian people, rich Jewish people, rich white people don't like fucking hanging out with poor people, period. Don't like that shit and don't do it. Don't want their kids marrying them. Don't want their kids hanging out with them. That's never going away. It's never going away. So you got a choice. And you know, it's just like, we're all created equal. We're all valuable. No, the fuck we're not. There are people who are a waste of organic tissue. They're walking around, doing bad shit, fucking people, robbing people, um, killing people, and they're not contributing to the rest of mankind. They are pretty much like a parasite on mankind. And if you're going to say that that person is as good as a nun who goes out and gives water to the thirsty children or a doctor who's saving lives or a police officer or a fireman who's putting their life on the line to save innocent people and you want to compare and say that person is worth just as much as those people, you're fucking stupid and out of your mind. One of the things growing up that I was told, don't be worthless. Don't be on no account. Don't be a layabout. Don't be someone who hasn't doesn't offer anything to the world so there are other people who are better than some people yes it's true and then the sooner you embrace that fact then you can realize where you are on the food chain if you're on that we're all created this no, we're not all created the same we're not we're not you got to let that pipe dream go because I think people keep, I think actually the upper echelon puts that shit out so the mediocre people don't kill them. I think that's one of the reasons they keep that shit going because when people, when you realize that you are really fucked up and you've done nothing to change your fucked upness, you might actually become suicidal or homicidal because many of your lifelong core values will be immediately disrupted. 
I went through that, like I said, early on in life, and my brain was malleable, so I could accept the information and not lose my freaking mind. And that's where many of you are, because I'm telling you, Google, I put this video up, Google's like hiring people who can do shit. It's going to get to a point where what you can do is more important than anything. It's just the whole hiring process is going to change. It's like they're going to come in and they're going to have you do the job they want you to do. And that's going to be your interview, which makes a lot of sense. Should be doing that shit now. Have you do the job. See if you can fucking do it. Turn into a contest. Hire 20 motherfuckers for a week and the best motherfucker wins. It's like, okay, guarantee you, you will weed out all the people who can't do the job. You will save yourself a ton of effort dealing with bullshit. But if you want to become wealthy 1% of the time, break your life up in incremental bits and create an activity plan where you work on getting better as frequently as possible. Focus on the process, not the end goal, not where you started, but the process. Because, you know, for my books to get written, I got to write X amount of words. So my whole thing is not even work focusing on the books, it's focusing on how do I create a better writing process because once the process is groomed the books will just they'll just pop out because i'm working on the process and you know when i talk to other writers because uh someone that put up a comment and i i'm gonna address this shit that you know all indie writers are harvesting uh email addresses and i was like you know and they deleted that shit because they were gonna look like boo boo the fool i'm a member of like six writing groups and every time i bring up something about building the email list most people look at me like huh what the fuck is that and i'm sitting there like no they're not i would say there's a top or echelon of indie writers who are getting email addresses but the way that i created to get the email address they ain't doing that shit they ain't doing that shit because there's a difference between